This is going to sound like a total shock to probably all of you watching this and are familiar with my taste in movies and what I've been liking recently. But I just walked out of Godzilla X Kong, whatever it's called, and I think I loved it. <laughs> I had a really good time watching this movie. I want to spoil it and talk about a few different things. So what I'm going to do first is just give you the short non-spoiler. I think this is a movie for everybody if you know what you're getting. It's monsters fighting. It's silly. It's funny at times. Uh, not the humans. Biggest criticism with all these movies, they never learn. The humans suck. And <clears throat> they don't suck here, but some of the humor here is really just annoying. Outside of that, the fights, the characterization now of each monster, Godzilla and Kong, are perfect. I love them. <laughs> and I sat there through most of this movie with the biggest smile on my face. I was quite surprised, and I went in with very, very, very low expectations, so I'm quite happy. I think you'll enjoy it if you tamper your expectations. It's just a giant monster fighting movie. There's a lot of fun to be had there. It didn't overstay its welcome. Yeah, check it out. Godzilla X Kong, well done. Okay, now spoilers. Not really spoilers, but some things you probably don't want to hear in a generalized review. I want to just start with the things I loved, okay? Kong. This is Kong's movie. He's definitely the main character. As I mentioned before, his characterization is great. He's just like this hardened warrior Kong. And I should mention, I haven't really liked any of the MonsterVerse movies. Any of them. There are things I take out of each one which I like, but I haven't liked any of them. I think Godzilla 2014 is boring. King of the Monsters was more boring. Skull Island was okay, but I probably should re-watch that. I might like it more. Godzilla vs. Kong, I didn't like. And here we are, loving this. It's bizarre. But yes, Kong is great. Godzilla, I fucking love Godzilla. And I love this Godzilla. In this movie, he becomes pink, he charges up, He's just like this war horse, this beast. He's undefeatable. He's fantastic. And he sleeps in the Roman Colosseum. The movie ends with him going back to sleep in the Roman Colosseum, which I thought was hilarious. That's cute. That's fun. That's humanizing Godzilla. Like they haven't really done. In terms of humanizing things, there's a lot of damage in the final battle here. A lot of people are dead. These monsters kill millions, but it's a worthy sacrifice for a good fight. And it was a good fight we got at the end here. And they do humanize our two leads. Kong is humanized through his eyes and his humanoid actions. Great throughout, he gets the big gauntlet, which is just cool. It's just cool. This is the inner child coming out of me now. It's, it's just cool. This is like a superhero movie we haven't been getting, where it just is what it is. It gives you what you want. It could be better, yes. I'm not saying this is a perfect movie, not by any stretch of the imagination. But it is just what it is, and it delivers. Let's talk about some of the humans. Dan Stevens, I don't think I've ever seen him in a movie before. But he's so charming, he's great. Rebecca Hall, who I didn't like in the last movie, um, debuts a new haircut here, and I think she's a great actress. She's very strong here, she's very strong, in terms of her strength when she needs to be, and been very vulnerable when she needs to be. Well, very, very likable characters here, these human leads. She has a daughter who was in um, the last movie. She's fine, nothing special. They take her character in a direction towards the end of this movie that's, you know, a little strange. Probably, there's probably a lot of people out there that are gonna call it cringy and she's a girl boss. It's none of that. It's, it's just what it is, you know. They never know how to write these human characters properly and the trend continues here. And the worst offender of all is Brian Tyree Henry. Why did you bring this character back? He annoyed the fuck out of me in Godzilla vs Kong. He annoyed the fuck out of me here. He did the same in this movie. Just a character played by a good actor that just doesn't stop. 
tries too hard to be funny. The funniest parts in this movie are when action happens through the characterization of the monsters. Like I said before, Godzilla going to sleep in the Roman Colosseum. It just reminds me of a cat, you know, that wants to curl up in a nice tight place. It's funny. Uh, Kong at the end um, pets the chin of Shimu, which is one of the other monsters. That's cute. And then he rolls in victory and he's holding the arm of the little monkey, like going, yeah, we did it. That's characterization. And that made me smile. It's like, yeah, yeah, Kong, yeah, fuck yeah, you did. I like that stuff. So the monsters are great, the leads. The majority of the humans in this movie were okay. The villain was actually quite creepy looking, like this dangly red monkey. Not bad, not a bad villain. That's all he had to be was just a physical threat. And he was controlling Shimu, which is like almost like Godzilla, this big frost breath dragon thing, like a big dinosaur, huge. The final battle was just great. Everyone got their hit in, everyone had their team ups, there's some great slow motion shots. I really, I really was sitting there smiling the whole time. I, I really did have a good time with this. Another big criticism I will say is that there are points in the second act where it drags. Some of the exposition is just dragging, grating to my soul. You know, Godzilla Clearly, he's going pink. He's gone pink, and he emerges as he emerges as he emerges. Now I'm going to say it again. He emerges out of the ice, pink, pink as fuck. And the military go, "Oh my god, he's changed." We get it. Or he's he kills like this monster to steal its power. He's going to steal its power. We get it. You don't have to lay it on so thick. I did take a couple of notes, little problems. Let me read these to you. There's a number of songs in the movie that just come out of nowhere and stop and don't get edited through the action that's occurring. I am sick to death of movies doing that. It feels so jarring and the, the difference between scenes is more apparent, you know? Music in movies for action scenes and all that should be like cheese on a good sandwich. It should bring it all together. Combine all those flavors. You see Kong punch something set to a Kiss song. I want to see it. Don't just turn on the song for 15 seconds and turn it off to wake the audience up. Hate that. The score here, there were moments it became 80s synth. I wanted more of that. I love that. They didn't though. Make another one, give me more synth. Oh, I appreciate that this movie is just under two hours long and doesn't waste your time. It just keeps going. That's a point. Stupid name cards. Yeah, you know like in movies when you go to a new location and they have to have the title card to tell you where you're at? I mean, I get it for some movies, but this one, it's stupid. They show the pyramids in Egypt and then Egypt. I'm like, I know where I fucking am. Like, what? Eh. Oh, and there's a zero G fight just before the big final battle takes place where the monsters are fighting in zero gravity. That's the shit I love. Whoever would have thought we'd see something like this? Awesome. So outside of Brian, Tyree, Henry and bad exposition, I'm fine with this movie. Had a real great time. <laughs> I will say to finish this video, I will be sad if the MonsterVerse ends with this. I really love this Godzilla, I really love King Kong, and I don't want this to be the end of those two characters. And isn't, isn't that weird? I'm talking about them as characters even though they can't speak. I hope we get another one. I hope we do get closure to this story, and then if they have to reboot... I mean, you, you don't have to reboot this. You can keep it going forever. If it makes money, you can bring in new humans, a new threat, whenever you want, and keep Godzilla and Kong. I'd love that. <laughs> Every three or four years, do that. Do it. Why not? Fuck me. If Steven Seagal could do that throughout his whole movie career, Godzilla and Kong can do it. Okay? I thought I'd hate this. I really did. But 
you know, life is full of surprises. Yeah. I did consider doing a double feature tonight and staying back to watch Poo, Blood and Honey 2. <laughs> I can't do it to myself though. I'm going to bed. Goodbye.